Hello, hello. It has been quite a while since I made a knitting video, let alone a knitting podcast episode, but I'm actually very excited to be making this one today. But before I get into all of the knitting stuff, I just wanted to talk about where I've been for the past 20 months, what has transpired. Essentially, back in July of 2021, I was experiencing severe pain, back, shoulders, neck, you name it, everything around here just hurt so, so much. And that was basically due to, I think you call it living a sedentary life. Essentially, I was just sitting on my ass the entire day. I was editing, making videos, knitting, knitting whilst watching my lectures, studying. So it was a lot of like doing this and like looking down. And yeah, I'm not the best at taking breaks. I tend to forget about time when I'm really delving deep into one of my hobbies. So sometimes I would knit for four hours without a break, which I cannot recommend please do not do this because it's really not good for your body but at that time as well I uh, decided to finally uh, go to the GP and get a referral to this like uh, I don't know not, like psychological pay like <laughs> psychiatric I don't I don't know <laughs> uh, basically in Dutch is like pedagog uh, which actually is for like uh, like children, but they also specialized in autism in adults. And that was basically why I was going to, I guess this, you could call it an institute. And there it turned out that um, I have uh, autism and that this was the cause of many, many issues, troubles that I was uh, facing in life and so I decided to really focus on getting more structure into my life and just essentially just improving uh, my life quality and that has happened thankfully things have been going actually very very well I managed to graduate uh, I have now a bachelor's in econometrics uh, I got that last uh, July so I'm very very proud of myself for that and currently I am preparing to write my bachelor's in Japanese um, for which I'll actually be going to uh, Japan in a couple of weeks I'll be uh, studying there for about six five months. So that's all very exciting. But essentially what that meant was that I had to push a lot of my hobbies to the sideline. Uh, also a bit of my physical health as well, because it was very intense um, kind of uh, the stuff that I, I was going through and uh, learning um, just so so much stuff so I really had to kind of prioritize uh, things and I finally got gotten to the point where I have now more time to focus on my physical health and on my hobbies again which is why I started uh, knitting again so yeah these past couple of days have been really fun falling in love with knitting again, seeing that my hands have not forgotten how to <laughs> actually knit, which is a huge relief. Like I had to look up a long, how to do a long tail cast on again, cause I essentially I forgot. But then once I got like one on it, one on the, on the knitting needle, it just like, it just came back, thankfully. Um, so yeah, I think we're already talking about knitting, right? So I would like to start off with the last project that I actually finished before I took my long break. And uh, that's this. I actually don't know if I discussed it on um, the main my main channel before, but 
or at least like the finished thing I don't think so okay so I just completely forgot to say anything about the specs so the yarn I used was life in the long grasses DK twist which is a 100% merino super wash yarn and I used the colors weathered and terracotta as for my knitting needle sizes for the ribbing I used three and a half millimeters and then for the body I used four millimeters so yeah these things <laughs> I don't know if I can actually like call them knitted shorts because they're kind of short they really look like underwear and I think I was kind of going for like the, the creation of underwear because I thought it was quite an interesting um, venue to venture off into like knitted underwear I had seen a couple of pictures uh, of knitted underwear online um, but I uh, <laughs> in hindsight this wasn't really smart but I decided to kind of like freestyle this whilst also using kind of like the the construction of this knitting pattern that I found in uh, Japanese online for free I will leave a link to that in the description box below but yeah this was a very interesting um, interesting project for me. I struggled a bit with getting started from what I can remember, um, but I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah. Um, do I wear this? Not very often, because I like it's too thick to use as like underwear. So I've just been using this as like really short shorts in, in bed just when like in the colder nights and uh, it's actually worked quite well as that. Um, I don't think I would wear this like out anywhere because it's, it's just far too short. But um, yeah, I think in the future I would actually like to make this again but then just a bit longer so that I can wear it underneath my skirts in or dresses in the winter just to give myself some extra warmth or just make it like um, smaller, less thick. Um, I don't know what that was, but um, I think someone just slammed that door. But um, I was thinking of maybe actually trying to and knit some underwear because I still think it's a very cool um, idea. Luckily for me, I uh, found my old knitting notebook and it has pretty clear, uh, like a pretty clear pattern, like uh, instructions how I made this. So I'm very thankful for past Seiji for doing that. So I also have like footage from when I was knitting this and I wanted to make like a knitting vlog. Um, I just have to look at the, the footage again, even see if I still remember what I exactly uh, I was doing. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll have to come back to that. Uh, maybe you'll just see it on the channel eventually. Now, uh, moving on to uh, this sweater. Um, again, I have no idea. I should have just like looked at the other podcast to see how much I spoke about these items. But honestly, I think it's really cringe watching myself. So <laughs> that makes the, the editing process also quite uh, hard at times. So usually when I finish editing, I actually just send the video off to a friend and see if I made any <laughs> mistakes. But uh, yes, that is this... Um, yeah, the, the piece, the next piece I wanted to talk about is this um, sweater. I'm going to try and see if I can get a good, if you can get a good view on this one. I think this is, looks pretty decent. Yeah, so this is actually my first piece of um, color work. Uh, I, I'm using like a Jap, oh, the lighting is so bad. Yes, I think this is good. So for this sweater, I used Bicycle from Westwall. It's a fingering weight yarn and I used the colors Copenhagen, which is the black and then Berry, which is the, the, the red. It's 90% Falkland Merino and 10% 
tassel, which I'm guessing is just like wool from sheep in tassel, which is a tiny island in the northern part of the Netherlands. And then for the needles, I used the size two and a half millimeters. Yeah, so I've been using this, well, at least I used this uh, Japanese pattern. Um, one of, I think it's either this book or another book, but it looked kind of like similar to this um, uh, this knitting book. Well, 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 it turns out that it did not look similar, but yes, the book is called Knitted Eclogs, Clothes and Accessories Knitted with Fair Isle Technique, and the designer is Toshiyuki Shimada. And um, yeah, I was using that, uh, pattern to um, to knit this up. Um, the only thing is that um, for some re like what was I want <laughs> I want to say I'm losing track. There's just so much I want to to say about this. Essentially, I used smaller knitting needles. I think about two millimeters. I think I used the top was two and a half or 2.25 millimeters. And then like the ribbing and the squares um, were two. And I did that in accordance with the pattern. But what ended up happening was this weird stuff, as you can see, it's like, it's sh like it's weight like way tighter, way tinier than uh, the top. And so it creates this like, this bowl uh, shape at the bottom. And it got me kind of sad because I, I was really proud of what I'd done. Like, yes, there's so many mistakes in this, but I think it's really uh, pretty and um, it was really helpful. Like, it was just a fun experience, like working on this sweater. So yeah, having this, um, this side being so ugly, if I can say that, made me quite sad. I kind of lost motivation working on this. Basically how I, I knit it, I started off here, right? So I was starting, I was working up here and then I thought, oh, I just really wanna see how this fits me. So I decided to finish the, the under part and then this monstrosity happened. So I think I'm just going to have to unravel um, everything up until here, but I have like no idea how to do that. Well, I do, but I <laughs> just know it's going to be a pain in the ass because I'm gonna have to, I don't actually, I might not know cause it's like color work and it looks very, complicated. Anyway, I think this is just a project that I want to put on the side. Maybe I'll just start completely from scratch, actually. Although I put so much work into this, but then again, I do want a really cool sweater and be like proud of it, you know? So that's kind of like, it's hard, right? When you're knitting because you want, to create the best thing you can possibly. And then you, you make like tiny mistakes here and there. And it's like, ugh, if I take all this out for this tiny mistake, is it really worth it? Uh, but I think in this case it actually is. And yeah, there are just like tons of like tight, like tension issues as well here. It's supposed to be, for instance here, it's supposed to be a bit uh, clearer, um, like there's supposed to be like a, a more red visible here, but the dark just like completely um, like takes over. And it's, I don't know, it's, I'm just not happy with this though. Like as I'm talking myself through this, I'm really just not happy with this. So I think it is time to, whoa, I think it is time to just unravel this and um, try something else try it, do it again. Um, and then oh, we have another of my menaces and that's this uh, vest. Um, I The pattern that I used for this vest uh, comes from Gregoria Fibers. I, I got this one like really long ago. The yarn that I used for this project comes from Drops. I used Kid Silk, 75% mohair and 25% silk in the color beige, 
which is also labeled number 12, and then cotton merino, 50% wool and 50% cotton, also in the color beige, and this time with the number three, and I held these together throughout the project. And I was really into knitting vests. I knitted two vests from, I believe, my favorite knits. I'll leave a link to that in the description box below. I knitted, yeah, I knitted two of them. I was like, oh, I really want to um, knit another one. And I really thought that uh, this vest from Gregoria Fibers was really cool. And so I followed the pattern. I did all the, how do you call it again? Swatches? Like I, like I knitted a, a square and I um, did that. And I thought everything was fine, but then all of a sudden when I was trying to knit, uh, so basically <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself constantly. Basically I knit everything up till here and I actually attached uh, the back and the front side because this is like, uh, you start with uh, the bottom here and you knit up and then you split split it and then you knit both sides back and front and then you you um you knit them together and so then you knit the the where your arm goes in <laughs> how do you call that the sleeves yes <laughs> so that's how you knit the sleeves eventually and i was at the point of knitting the sleeves and then it turned out that it was far too tight and so i ended up um having to cut a lot of things i just cut the the top of this just off and uh now it's been like this for almost two years and uh the back i haven't uh cut yet but if you see here on this side i've already i already put like yarn in between so that once i cut this off um, or at least I can just put my knitting needles through here and then I can start working on the back again. Basically, I'm just kind of worried as to how high up I should be uh, knitting the front because also at some point there's um, like a button thing, this very cute button thing. Um, so I, I'm just constant. Well, when when I was working on it, I was constantly wondering like, when should I put the button? When should I put the button? Um, but I think I should just give. Just, I don't know. Just I should just start working on it again and see how far uh, I get. But it's this has just been such for some reason such a hard project for me like I <laughs> just even starting it like the first time time that I started this one um i think it was too tight like the bottom was not as loose as i wanted it to be so i unraveled it and then the second time i actually did it well but then i twisted the loop oh, such a noob move but um yeah and i had to unravel that as well so i've just met so many issues with this vest that um, i just didn't want to work on it anymore but i think enough time has passed now and i think i should be able to actually um finish this however i do think i will do that once i get back from uh japan because i don't yeah i don't know i just don't want to do it now <laughs> Yeah, I just have a couple of days before I leave and I don't want to like drag along an unfinished project that um, I've already like partially lost my motivation for. Then uh, we're moving on to the last um, unfinished object from uh, 2021. And that is this um, sock. The yarn I used for this one is from Isager and it is alpaca 2 which consists of 50% alpaca and 50% wool and the colour is 4S. Don't know what that means but it is 4S. As for the needles I used 2.5 millimetres. I, I think so much went wrong with this. Well. Yeah, so much just went wrong with this. Uh, first off, I think the fabric, I shouldn't have chosen this fabric for a sock. I think it's, um, 
I don't think it's like sock, like sock weight. I don't know how to, I don't know all the terms, but um, I think this is, uh, okay, start over. Um, these socks, yes. Um, I had the idea that I would only need two, um, like, bulla, bulla, what's the English word for that again? Like two, just two pieces of yarn, essentially, I thought I would need for a sock. And I had gr grossly underestimated that. Also the way that I was knitting the, uh, the leg, like tons of fabric, uh, it's, um, yeah, basically what happened was that I used so much fabric um, for this sock that it was gonna be a very expensive pair of socks, like going towards the like 30, 40 bucks, um, which I felt would be kind of a waste. Also, it's not the most durable wool um, yarn. It's 50% alpaca and 50% wool and usually when you're making socks you want to have I don't know maybe like nylon or something that's a bit more durable because if you're wearing socks it's going, going to have a lot of wear so um, this was just not a good choice um, all around so I am going to unravel it I only just kept it so I could could show show it but um, yeah it was good practice though I also did this on double pointed needles um would not recommend doing that with socks I, I just thought it was like incredibly um fiddly and um definitely would go for like just the um, circular knitting needles um which i'm doing now and this is actually oops this is actually the last project that i wanted to talk about um it's the one that i actually started but yeah an old friend of mine recently started uh, knitting more avidly and we've been uh, messaging each other since then which is a couple of days um talking about uh, the stuff that we're working on and um yeah i'd like to show you all as well um yeah so i already said that it was a, a pair of socks also did i ever show this yarn ball i really like this yarn ball um here's the back although it has like has been nicked here unfortunately but um let me just take out this so my first actual, like I've tried, I'm pretty sure I spoke about this in um, previous episodes, but I have tried making uh, socks for the longest time. I think I've made like four or five attempts and I never got past <laughs> the cuff, but this time I actually did. Woo! So I actually got like, um, some good yarn. This is actually really cool. Um, it's from Onion. It's not their like uh, um, sock wool, but it's the it's number four. It has it's seventy percent brand nettles nettles. It's seventy percent nettles and thirty percent uh, nylon. So that was actually a lie. <laughs> I don't know what was going on in my brain at the moment of recording, but in actuality, this yarn consists of 70% wool and 30% nettle fibers. And fun fact, the nettles are actually the thing that provide durability. And so in that way, it is a natural fiber alternative to, for instance, I don't know, nylon or like poly, poly something, you know, that you often see in sock yarns. Yeah. So I finally, like I said, I got past uh, the, the cuff and like the leg. So this is how far I've gone. Basically, all, all there's left to do is just a bit of uh, circular knitting and then uh, decreasing and then doing a Kitchener stitch. And um, yeah, then I have my first sock. Um, I don't think I have enough yarn 
uh, this is how much I've got left, but I'm going to try and see if I can actually um, get there, we'll see. But I'm really happy with um, how it looks. Maybe I, I should just put my hand in here and give more of a, of a view, I should, yeah. Like, obviously there's like issues here and there, it's not done. Um, as pretty everywhere but I mean this is my first sock it was really cool actually learning about the construction of a of a sock it, it, like I was thinking kind of hard with the heel flap and the um, heel turn like how how that's done and I'd like to actually focus for now on just knitting socks because they're so so quick you can be quite quick with uh, knitting uh, these I I I think this took me like one day to to do when I was also like doing tons of other other things and uh, yeah I'd love to know more I also had this one book that I spoke about before that had this whole section about different types of um, sock like um, techniques in terms of the heel and the ending or from from bottom to top from bottom to top and top uh, to bottom so it would be really cool if I could just take a couple of pictures of that book and then um try and knit a couple of socks when I'm in Japan because it's yeah it's like very tiny projects very easy uh to do um very fun so yeah I think I'm going to be a, a sock girly for uh the coming couple uh, of weeks I have already got one uh, request in to make a pair of socks even though I haven't even finished uh, this one but um, yeah I'm very much so looking forward uh, to that in um, the future maybe I could tell you a bit more about how I went about uh, this one uh, I just used the three millimeter needles I think this is about uh, one meter like circular needles um yeah this is i believe a, a reinforced heel flap and then i've uh, i've no idea how this heel turn uh, what, what's what the technique is but essentially i used this very popular video on youtube um talking about just basically explaining how to knit this sock so i've mainly followed that and made my own adjustments because um yeah, I didn't use like uh, the YouTuber did uh, two and a half needles and I also didn't follow the same like uh, count in terms of um, stitch count. So I uh, I just kind of like winged it here and there, but um, yeah, very happy with how it's turned out. And uh, yeah, very excited to see different types of socks that I'll be knitting in the future. I think I'm mainly just going to focus on like one collar and just doing different types of uh, techniques. Also, that's what I think is really cool about socks. You can try out new techniques um, and not feel like you have to make an entire project. Um, they're just very good to practice with, um, I think. So yeah, that's everything I have for today. Uh, I also have, well, not really actually, I have this one book, but I don't know exactly where it is at the moment, but it's about um, knitting uh, more properly in terms of like physical, um, like your your physique oh this is such a bad explanation but basically it's about um how to knit uh properly so that you can knit as much as you want um but keeping your health optimal i think it's called ergonomic knitting so i'm hoping to read that in tandem with uh, knitting these socks so that what happened last time doesn't happen again and yeah i think that kind of sums everything up for now as always thank you very much for watching and i hope to see you in another knitting podcast episode episode cheers <laughs>